So welcome back to the YouTube channel guys. Kind of like a muggy day here in an Elethan and I thought it'd be a cool idea to share some tips and tricks and stuff to help improve your mountain biking. So these are going to be tips that are going to vary from the fundamentals all the way through to things that you might not actually realize you're not doing on the trails. So hopefully once you've gone through these, it'll take your ride to the next level as well as improve your confidence when you're out riding on the trail. Okay, so tip number one is the track stand. So track stands are a great thing to learn. You don't have to have any special equipment. You just literally need a fire road like this and literally you just want to work on balancing on your pedals and, and holding yourself steady. Track stands are great when you're on the trails and they can transfer to a lot of different uh, parts of your riding, especially when you want to try and find balance on your bike, whether you want to drop into a, a new feature on the trail or you're riding down some steep stuff and you want to almost slow things down get your balancing point right, get your line right, track stands can come in real handy. The tip number two is the trusty manual. So this is pretty much where you're being able to balance over your back wheel without pedaling. Really good tip that transfers well over to pretty much, again, any kind of riding, whether you're on a pump track, out trail riding, riding downhill. The manual is a really good fundamental skill to learn. So not only is it good skill for finding your balancing point over your rear wheel, it's pretty fundamental when you're going down a trail to be able to pop the front wheel up to get over obstacles that you know you need to get over to carry speed and generate speed as you're riding. Tip number three is the bunny hop. Pretty similar to the manual in the fact that you bring your front wheel up but then your back wheel is following. Real helpful for getting over obstacles when you're riding down most trails in the woods here anyway in Leithen, whatever. Again, a real fundamental skill that transfers over to pretty much any type of riding you're doing. Doesn't even matter what level you're at, beginner through to advanced. It should be like a skill that you should consistently work on. Uh, you know, if you're better at bunny hops, you could try and challenge your mates to competitions to see who, who can hop the highest, hop over obstacles. Or even if you're just getting started with bunny hops, you can put like a little stick or a little marker on the floor and see if you can hop both wheels over it on just a basic fire road. So tip number four is not essentially a skill, but it is a skill. It is looking ahead when you're going down the trail. This has been a fundamental lesson for me over the past few years in making sure I'm always looking like ahead. And obviously the faster you're going down the trail, the further down the trail you want to look because things are obviously gonna come at you faster. You need to process those things, process obstacles and features on the track. So I, when I see a lot of people riding, they actually look no matter what speed they're going, they end up looking too far at the front wheel. This isn't too good. Obviously if you start going fast and you're looking at your front wheel, you, you can't exactly see what's coming. So it's not, it's not ideal, it's pretty dangerous. But tip number five is line choice. Again, we've done videos on this in the past. I actually did a, a trail breakdown video. So I'll put a link on the screen to that if you wanna go check that out. But basically line choice is pretty key when it comes to riding more efficiently, riding faster and becoming, creating more flow down the trail essentially. To work on the skill of line choice is probably best picking one of your local trails that you, quite, you know quite well, that has multiple lines and go up and section bits of track. So go and ride a section, walk back up, try a different line, see if you can carry more speed through a section, see if there are ways where you can get your braking points sorted before you come into a section so you can carry more speed out the exit, wherever it's a turn or a rock garden or a drop, jump, whatever. Line choice is definitely key to creating more flow when you're riding down the trail. So tip number six is being able to pump the bike when you're on the trail. There are many different ways to do this. Riding a pump track is a great way to learn how to pump and catch the backside of a roller to generate speed without pedaling. You don't have to have a pump track. You can do this on any, any bit of trail. Basically, you wanna be trying to catch the backside of a roller or a, a piece of gradient on the trail to generate speed. Say if you have like a, a dip in the track that is like longer than a bike length, it might be worth looking at trying to push into that hole and out the other side to basically generate speed rather than just pretty much just riding through the hole and letting your bike take the impact. You can actually use, it, use your suspension real well to generate speed. And by doing that, by pumping, you're actually saving energy because you're not pedaling. And it's a, it's a real efficient way to go faster on your bike. For tip number seven, we're gonna talk a bit about braking, uh, braking points and also covering your brakes as well. It's quite a big thing. So a mistake I see a lot of riders making is when they're riding, more so beginner riders than anything else, is that they'll hold the grips, but they won't cover their levers with a finger. I always cover my levers with a, a finger just to make sure I'm always on the ball and I'm always ready just in case I need to do a quick bit of braking or need to brake in an emergency, emergency say. Say if you're holding the grips like this, this is called death gripping, and you're going down a trail and something jumps out in front of you, you haven't really got any time to 
pull that finger out and jam the brakes on. So I'd always try and think about keeping at least a finger covering the brakes just in case you need to make adjustments and stuff like that. Another thing I'm breaking as well, breaking points into corners and features. Essentially, breaking points in a trail, you wanna find where essential breaking points are. Say if you're coming into a, a set of switchbacks, you don't want to really be braking too much in the corner because you want to be carrying flow. So the idea is to get your braking done before the switchbacks and then stay off the brakes as you flow through the switchbacks so you can carry as much speed as possible out. So tip number eight, being in the wrong gear. So when you're riding fast down a trail, let's say for instance you're coming down a real steep bit of track and then there's a sharp or a steep little uphill pinch in the middle of the track and that you need to pedal out the other side to get over the hill or uphill section. If you're in like the wrong gear, so you're in the, like the biggest cog, and you go to pedal when you're going fast, you're just gonna spin out like. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> like ridiculous road runner pace and not be able to generate any momentum up the other side. Same goes for when you're climbing uphill as well. You see a lot of people trying to pedal uphill in like a too harder gear or even a too easier gear. That's kind of like personal preference. I mean, everyone has different cadences and different speeds. They like to go uphill. I prefer to climb fairly no, I'd probably say on the, the faster side of things, just out of my cadence level. But uh, I'm always in a gear that's got me like a, a consistent pedaling pace. So with being clipped in as well, I'm not really trying too hard, but then I'm not actually spinning out either, which it works in both ways. It's pretty efficient, it's energy saving, and it's gonna get you to the top of the hill faster. The tip number nine, this is probably something people don't talk about too much, is mixing up where you go riding. So we live in an Elethan here and there is literally dozens and dozens of trails. And although I've only been here for about a year or so, I'm getting quite used to the trails that are already here. So it's quite easy to go and ride a lot of these tracks on autopilot really fast. And I don't think that does too, too much in the way, way of working on skills and making me a progressively better rider. What I'd best be doing is going to a, a new location or somewhere that gets me out of my comfort zone, somewhere that I'm not used to, somewhere that's got different terrain. So maybe maybe here is fairly, the dirt is quite sandy and quite shaly, if you like, not sandy, it's quite shaly. Maybe if I went to go and ride somewhere that was the complete opposite, so it was quite sandy and dusty all the time and really, really rocky, that would, I know that would challenge me and take me outside my comfort zone and progress my riding even further, just because it opens up your, opens up a new skill set. Anybody who can, adopt to different styles of riding is always going to be the better overall rider so definitely go and if you can go and check out different places to ride other than your local riding place so tip number 10 another way to unlock your riding potential is working on your fitness again it's not exactly bike related stuff but being able to work on your strength so whether that's a gym training program or working on your bike fitness just enables you to go for longer enables you to hold yourself up better when you're going down the trails trails so you can stay stronger and obviously you're doing all this you're losing technically less energy so you can ride for longer and have more fun it's like a double-edged sword when you're starting out like if you've come from a background of a non-fitness related background and you're getting into bike riding sometimes it can be pretty hard to go out on big long rides because you simply don't have the capacity but if you build the capacity up you build the strength up you'll be able to ride for longer have more fun and just enjoy yourself more I guess. So tip 11 we're going to talk a bit about tyre pressure really really key thing that often gets overlooked people just you know pump their tyres up as they pretty much measure their tyre pressure like this like oh yeah that's that's okay um, but it's probably best getting yourself a tire pressure gauge. They cost, you know, next to nothing. I'll put a link in the description below to the tire pressure gauge I've got. It's just a digital pressure gauge. But having optimal pressure in your tires just just makes it so you can have more grip in your front and rear rear wheels when you when you're going down the track, and it makes your riding more predictable. So I don't know if you've been down a track before and you, you're riding quite fast and your tires feel to be pinging off everything and there's no consistency. You just, everything's just unpredictable and it, it makes your confidence levels drop and then because of that you ride slower. Just by adjusting your tyre pressures, you can literally boost your confidence and your riding skill. So if we talk about you know, giving you some recommended PSIs or pressures, it might obviously be different for every single person, but I weigh about 80 kilos and usually my go-to tyre pressures are about 24 PSI in the front and 26 psi in the back this might drop slightly depending on the riding conditions the trails that sort of stuff 
and we've got inserts in these as well so we can actually drop them down to about 20 psi and still have grip without the tires rolling or folding so that might be worth considering but if you're one of those people who's just pumping your tires up to 30 plus psi you're not doing yourself any favors so get a pressure gauge check what pressures you run in and go test it out on the trails and i guarantee that'll improve your riding just that tip on its own okay so tip number 12 we're gonna talk about cockpit setup. So obviously the cockpit is the handlebars, the brakes, the gears, pretty much anything we use to control and steer the bike. There's a number of different things we can do here. So we can obviously adjust the brake levers up and down. We can roll the bars forward or backwards, and we can obviously adjust the width of the bars by chopping them down. Making small adjustments to these like makes a massive difference to your riding. For example, if you've got a decent optimal width handlebar, you're gonna find yourself in a much more solid, stable riding position rather than having too narrow handlebars and being less unstable or even too wide isn't a good thing like sometimes I see people having too wide handlebars that like wider than their shoulders so it almost creates instability rather than adding it i'm not too sure what my shoulder width is but i'm just over six foot and my handlebar width is about 760 millimeters wide uh, brake levers obviously adjusting them so they're more flat or down will adjust the way your position is on the bike. Again, that's personal preference. It might be something worth testing. And same with bar roll as well. Bar roll literally adjusts your whole body. So the exa example, if I roll my bars too far forwards, my body weight is gonna be further over the front. And then if I roll the bars back, it's gonna be biased towards the back of the bike. So definitely worth spending a bit of time setting up your cockpit. So tip 13, another basic one as well. Go, if you can and you've got access to one, go and check out and ride a trail center. Trail centers are made to accommodate for every kind of rider from beginner through to advanced. There's something for everybody to practice. And even if an advanced rider goes to a trail center, they can still work on the fundamentals. So pumping, carrying speed, like we talked about earlier in tip number three, or learning how to do basic jumping skills, learning how to corner properly, working on the fitness on some of the climbs in trail centers. Trail centers have everything. And if you go to a decent one, they usually have a kick-ass cafe to get a good feed after you finish riding. And the final tip is actually going racing. It might not be for everyone racing bikes, like I absolutely love racing, uh, but it's kind of crazy and unexplainable the position bike racing puts you in because having a clock against you or some you know tapes down the side of a track changes your whole mentality of how you approach riding and it almost pushes you in some respects to ride better to ride more confidently to, to, to ride things you wouldn't usually ride but again it's not for everyone but there are many different types of racing you can do from enduro to downhill to cross country whatever I would definitely definitely go check one out even if it's just a grassroots race you don't have to do enduro world series level stuff but It'll definitely be something that will take your ride in and has helped me take my ride in to the next level. So that's pretty much it. There's 14 tips to help you take your ride into the next level. And I'm hoping improve your confidence when you're out on the trail. If you enjoy stuff like this, drop me a comment below. Give the video a like. Giving the video a like basically shares, helps YouTube show the video to more people. And it also lets me know as well that you're actually enjoying this sort of stuff. So if you are enjoying it, happy to make more stuff like this. Um, as well, comment below if you've got any more tips to help improve other people's riding. And make sure you get yourself subscribed to the channel if you've not already. And we'll see you in the next one.